in a world where our adversary, one of our, uh, one of the worst geopolitical threats, China, feels bold enough to send spy balloons over the United States and then lie to us and say that <laughs> it was a, uh, a weather balloon that went off course. Of course, that's a lie. And then we find out, oh, wait, wait, there's like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these things. Um, in that world where our enemies are gaining power, becoming more bold, we have a recruiting issue in the military. I've talked about this before on my channel. And the question is why? And the press has all kinds of answers. AP came out with an article that I want to react to today. But before I start, none of these views are those of the DOD, the Department of the Air Force. All these views are my own. But I want to say, if we don't get to the core issue, obviously, it will not be solved. So when we have a recruiting issue, the question is why. I say people really join for two reasons, financial or patriotic, combination of the two, right? So some variation, hey, I get to go to college because I, I, I joined the military for free, whatever. But that's financial, in my opinion. A lot of companies are starting to offer very similar, if not better benefits than the military. Okay, so a young person who is joining for financial reasons looks at her, their, his or her options and goes, okay, uh, I get to go to the field, eat MREs, suffer, um, potentially deploy, get shot at, whatever. Or I could go work at uh, Starbucks and go get a free degree, et cetera, et cetera, and get paid relatively the same. So they look at that cost benefit, and that's kind of a no-brainer if financial is the only reason they're wanting to join. So patriotic, okay? Those young people who are patriots who want to join for patriotic reasons, a lot of them have a history of service in the military throughout their family. Their uncle was in, their dad was in, their grandpa was in, whatever. Now, a lot of these families are not telling or are telling their young uh, nieces and nephews, sons and daughters to not join the military today. And I'd be interested to hear what you, if you're in the military, you have a history of service in the military. Would you tell your son or daughter to join today? Why or why not? So this legacy of service is ending. And the question is why, and that's what we're going to get into. So the AP put out this article about uh, the Army sees safety, not wokeness, as a recruiting obstacle. Now, I would ask you guys, what is your definition of wokeness? So when the military puts out a, uh, a questionnaire, wokeness is such a vague term. It's an all-encompassing term. You see somebody in purple hair, they're woke, whatever. But to me... My definition of that in the military is to take a take a mission, which is to put bad guys in the dirt, support and defend the Constitution. And that is somewhere below equity of outcome. Somewhere below. And they may not say that outright, but um, as far as priorities go, what is talked about, what is emphasized, um, mission and putting bad guys in the dirt supporting and defending the Constitution is below um, some kind of equity of outcome. And equity of outcome is antithetical to excellence. And just like in sports, uh, you lose if you say, hey, you know what? We have too many of this race um, on our team. We need uh, people of another race. Well, are they better? Are they better at, at uh, putting the ball <laughs> in the end zone? No. Well, then you're going to lose. Okay, so in the military, the answer is you're going to lose a battle and people are going to lose their life. If equity of outcome becomes more important than excellence. Now, almost all, well, there's a lot of military careers that have some kind of crucible, some kind of selection process. Now, if that selection process results in, let's say, 90% white uh graduates. Some people will look at that and say that is, uh, there's some kind of problem with the crucible itself 
So we need to change that. We need to change the selection process. We need to change the fact that uh, and somehow lower the standards for certain groups of people because they're not graduating. And there could be a lot of reasons for that that aren't racist. Unfortunately, a lot of people look at the result. Okay, th this is there's uh, a disproportionate number of Asians graduating, disproportionate number of whites, blacks, whatever. They look at the outcome and they say, okay, so obviously there was racism involved here. Obviously, that's not the case. But when you play these games in the military, the result is people die. It's not, it's not a like office politics kind of thing or an HR dispute. It's people die because you don't, you don't encourage, encourage excellence on the battlefield, which is ultimately what matters. At the end of the day, it's putting bad guys in the dirt and supporting and defending the Constitution. So wokeness to me is this realigning of priorities in the military, realigning our priority from supporting and defending the Constitution to something else, whatever that other thing is. And a lot of people are like, well, we don't do that. I'm like, okay. Um, we are literally um, giving briefings that, in my opinion, violate the Constitution when it comes to things like diversity, equity, and inclusion. It is segregating people based off of race. It is looking at <clears throat> an applicant. It is looking at a soldier, an airman, Marine, what have you. And it's filtering them not based off of their capability. It's filtering them first off of their race first. And some people think that's, that's a good thing to me. That's racism. Okay. So I need to take into account, not your ability, not your character. You need to take into account your race first. And somehow that makes you better or worse one way or another. I disagree with it. Um, and again, I think it's antithetical to excellence. Now, uh, let's keep looking at this article here. So the Army sees safety, not wokeness, as a top recruiting goal. So this recruiting issue has happened in the last two years, two to three. Didn't happen in 2019. So one might ask, what happened in those last two to three years? Okay, was something change? Okay. So I use logic there. Um, and yes, that we have like new generations of recruits all the time, but did something specific change in the last two or three years? You guys can answer that yourself. Okay, reading from the article, while some Republicans blame the poke or wokeness for the Army's recruiting was the military service itself says the bigger hurdles are more traditional ones. Young people don't want to die or get injured, deal with the stress of Army life and put their lives on hold. Sure, I'll agree with that. People who want to join for financial reasons, um, that's a tough sell. Hey, you can make less money than you do at a minimum wage job, but you're going to be in the field eating MREs, getting rained on, getting yelled at. Doesn't that sound great? To a person who's joining for financial reasons, no, it doesn't person who's joining for patriotic reasons, maybe it does. So that's never changed. The fact that you put your life <laughs> at risk in the military. But what may have changed is some people don't believe in the mission. Right? Young people say, hey, I don't want to put my life at risk for what the United States stands for today, for a variety of, of reasons. And those are personal to them. Okay, one thing the Army is doing is incentivizing recruiters by giving them $4,500 per quarter if they exceed their baseline enlistment requirements. A pilot program allows also young enlisted soldiers, those in the first three lower ranks, to get a promotion if they refer a friend and they get that friend to basic training. So they're incentivizing this um, recruiting program within the Army, like telling <laughs> friends telling friends to join. All right, Army Secretary Christine Warmuth said that the Army is set a difficult goal for this year, aiming to bring in 65,000 recruits, which is 20,000 more than in 2022, where they missed the recruiting goal by 15,000. It's difficult to predict how this will go, she said, adding that recruiters need to do all they can to surpass last year's numbers. All right. Again, got to get down to the basics. 
Why aren't people joining? According to the military, it's not wokeness. It's not uh, politics being injected into the military. It's not um, young kids seeing the Afghanistan withdrawal and being like, oh my goodness. Um, (laughs) It's not um, being experimented on in the military. None of that. It is kids are worried about their safety if they join the military. Military has always been unsafe. That is the nature of the military. That's how it works. Um, people understand that going in. They don't go in and, and think they're working at Best Buy. So, again, what happened in the last two years? Again, if we avoid this problem and we go, oh, let's stick our head in the sand. Um, is it wokeness? Again, define it. Define woke. Because a lot of young people don't know what you mean when you say woke. Because it can mean a variety of things. For the reading here, officials said that based on the survey, young people simply do not see the army as a safe place or a good career path and believe they would be putting their lives on hold and careers on hold if they enlisted. Mm-hmm. That's cr- that's true. You will. <laughs> I mean, it, you could turn it into a career, but serving in the military is an act of service for a reason. Um, and yeah, you do put your life on hold. And it, it, it can give you uh, a leg up to some degree. Um, but yeah, you can put your life on hold, especially if you're deployed. Army leaders, so I don't know how they would sell somebody who said, that's how I feel it's going to be. <laughs> and you go, yeah, that's how it is. That's how the military works. You follow orders. You do as you're told and you go where you're told. <clears throat> For the reading, army leaders said very few said that they are deterred from enlisting due to wokeness. Okay. I don't know if that's true. This is just anecdotal. I don't know if that's true. Um, In my experience. In fact, concerns about discrimination against women and minorities is seen as a bigger issue along with more general distrust of the military. Hmm. Okay. So it's not wokeness. It's a distrust of the military. Which one's worse, folks? I don't know. Um, so people aren't joining because they don't think that the military has their best uh, in mind, potentially. They don't trust them. So in regards to discrimination, I pulled this up. This is active component demographics in the Army. Um, and you, if you look up here at the top, uh, if we're talking proportions of the population, um, how it breaks down, whites are underrepresented, blacks are overrepresented when it comes to percentage of the population versus percentages in the army. Now, that's not to say that there is no discrimination. It is just like any other organization. You have bad apples. Um, and Obviously, the military puts a big emphasis on sexual assault, et cetera. And I'm not saying that uh, there isn't certain discrimination against women that people get away with. Um, A good example of this is the Vanessa Gein case um, that happened in 2020. There's a documentary on Netflix about it. Absolutely horrific and wrong. So that definitely can happen and does happen to some degree. But I don't, and so that's women. When they're talk, talking about discriminating against minorities, okay, I just showed you the breakdown of uh, how it breaks down percentage of population. Now let's look at things like uh, those crucibles I was talking about. Okay, when we're talking percentage of minorities that are in the four-star general rank, in the one-star general rank, et cetera, et cetera, if you look at that and you say, well, we have 20% African-Americans in the, in the armed service, in the army. And there's only 1% of generals that are African-American. That doesn't mean that there's racism. Okay. It doesn't mean that there's racism. It doesn't mean there, there's not, but you don't look at the result at the end and assume discrimination. You can look into it and say, okay, well, here's why they don't have these opportunities that, that, uh, in the military that uh, other races do. So we need to give them those opportunities. But in general, the military treats everyone the same. (laughs) They do. 
That's just the way the military works. Everyone's treated the same. Yes, it's unfair to, uh, to a certain degree, but ultimately it's pretty much a meritocracy. This is just my experience. Okay. So when people say discrimination of minorities, um, of course, I'm talking from my perspective. I don't see it. Okay. For the reading, wokeness is a slang term that originally described attentiveness to issues of racial and social justice. Don't need to put a qualifier on justice. Justice is justice. Okay. But wokeness also plays word games. Let me give you an example. If I were to say, um, being racially, uh, being non-discriminatory is not filtering somebody by the color of their skin is being colorblind. So if I look at you as an applicant, I don't go, all right, first and foremost, they're Asian. Second, they're a male. Third, they're 6'3", and so on and so forth. I think that's racist because you're looking at somebody's race and you're putting some kind of qualification based off that. Some kind of, they, they have something endowed to them because of their race, which is racist. Or they, they have some kind of quality or lack thereof because of their race, if you filter them by race first. So being attentive to racial issues, uh, when, I, when people say wokeness, colorblind is considered to be naive and you're, you're racist because you know what you should really do is really think about the history of X, Y, and Z and, okay, okay, what's the goal though? Is the goal to look at eventually in this utopia you want is to look at people, I would assume not based off their race, the goal is to not look at people based off the race with the content of the character, a la Martin Luther King. No, that's not the goal with wokeness. It is to filter people by race for positive reasons, not negative ones, but just because you're doing that doesn't mean it's not racist. My humble opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, so further reading here. Um, So it's a drug, I already talked about that. Banks and others have complained about, uh, this is a congresswoman, Pentagon's effort to target extremism in the military, providing courses on critical race theory, which uh, is racist, in my humble opinion. They use words like whiteness, what even is that? Uh, they use <clears throat> Marxist language. What do I mean by that? There, there's the oppressed and the oppressor. And instead of the rich and the poor, it's uh, different races. And so you're impugned with guilt or lack thereof based off of um, traits, maybe your skin color. Is that, Does that sound racist to you? It sounds racist to me. Okay, and yet you sit in these briefs and you go, "This seems, this seems racist," and yet they're telling me the goal of this training is to make you more racially sensitive. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, so, uh, further reading here: uh, Pentagon efforts to target extremism in the military provide courses in critical race theory and other efforts to expand diversity. They say focusing on partisan issues pushed by the left take away from the Pentagon's core mission, weakens the military, and turns off recruits. My experience, that's true. Again, look at the last two years. Um, Why are we having the recruiting problem now? Last two years. But the Army says that on average, only 5% of respondents on the survey listed wokeness as an issue. Right. Probably for a number of different reasons. Number one, these surveys are, I wouldn't say scientifically, uh, they're, they're taken in house a lot of the times, number one, and number two, define wokeness. Again, you're going to get 10 different, 10 different definitions. And we refer back up to here. And it said, army leaders said that the Bigger issues are discrimination against women and minorities, along with a more general distrust of the military. Where's that coming from? 
Okay, but the Army said that on average, only 5% of respondents, so like I said, it was wokeness, compared to 13% who say they believe that women and minorities will face discrimination and not get the same opportunities. Now, what are they basing that off of? They can feel that way. And I'm not saying that, um, mm, let's put it this way. Women who feel like they'll be treated differently in the military, um, I think that's a valid concern. The reason I say that is you are probably one-tenth of people in the military. And um, that's just, uh, obviously, there's, there's going to be gender dynamics that happen in the military. And if you see stories on social media, certain women coming out and saying, hey, I, I went through my chain of command. I said I was uh, sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, and they did nothing. There's a lot of stuff like that on social media. So I kind of understand where women are coming from, to be honest. The discrimination of the case in the military, that I don't understand. Again, going back to, it's not, so we look at as a percentage of population, African American, all minorities basically in the military are overrepresented as a percentage of the population in the military. Pretty much. So, which is one of the unique qualities of the military. Um, I've said this story before, but one of my fondest memories was in basic training when you take your civilian clothes off, you put that uniform on, and what's wild is, you know, you don't know these kids who are in your basic training class from anywhere but you become great friends with them, um, no matter their race, their background, et cetera, in all different backgrounds, right? All different socioeconomic backgrounds, racial backgrounds, et cetera. You become great friends with them because you're suffering together and you're laughing together. That's how camaraderie is formed, shared suffering and laughter. And it's one of the mo more unique experiences you'll ever have in life because not very often that you get everyone from these social, economic, and racial backgrounds together working on the same thing. And um, for that reason, I think it's one of the most integrated places in the world, the United States military. Um, and the, the interesting thing is, you know, I'd see these kids that I was in basic training with after basic training when they put their civilian clothes back on. And I'd think to myself, okay, based off the way um, – you are dressed like your interests or whatnot. I may not have like just come up to you and randomly become friends with you, but because we were working on this together, because kind of our individual identity was stripped away for a while and we became part of a team, we become, we became very good friends. To me, if you try to take that away, I don't know. I mean, I think that's one of the best parts of the military. <laughs> That like, hey, it doesn't matter, you know, you, you step on, on those uh, footprints in basic training and they're like, hey, your race doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that we're all wearing the same uniform. That's what matters. I think that's awesome. Um, and I think critical race theory is taking away from that. All right, further reading here. Fink, the Army marketing head, said that the top three reasons young people cite for rejecting military enlistment are the same across all the services. Fear of death, that's always existed. So what's unique in the last two years? Worry about post-traumatic stress disorder. I would say awareness of that is definitely going up. And leaving friends and family. Okay, but most, I would say all three of those have existed. Uh, and, and people were aware of them before they join the military forever. So what is unique in the last two years where we've had these recruiting issues where these things are becoming an issue? Okay. I think I've said my piece enough. I don't, you know, I think the military is one of the most racially integrated and, and across the board. If you ask people their experience in the military, and this is just, I guess, anecdotal for me, it's one of the least racist places I've ever been. Meaning you are not judged by the, uh, your, the color of your skin. 
you're judged off based on what you do, meritocracy. And when they inject critical race theory, does it <clears throat> enhance the military? Does it make it more lethal? Does it make us better at putting bad guys in the dirt and supporting defending the Constitution of the United States? I don't think so. I don't think so. That's just my two cents. Again, these aren't uh, the opinions of the DOD or the United States Air Force. These are just mine. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, obviously, this is an issue, especially as we have existential crises. or uh, We have actual enemies who feel bold enough to fly over the United States, violate our airspace, and spy on us. Not a good time to have a recruiting issue, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. See you guys next time. Peace.